We evangelicals are so trendy. How trendy are we? We are this trendy. My name's Doug. I'm a pastor from Oklahoma. I don't know. My sermons and illustrations, they're just not really connecting these days. So I tried everything. Books, prayer, books on prayer, fasting. Nothing's really working. We grew up in church. We've just seen over time pastors just kind of become outdated. We wanted to create a program to help pastors kind of become more relevant. Yeah, help extend their reach. Just, you know, build their platform a little. Throw a little juju on their beat. Doug, how you doing, sir? I'm okay. What can we do for you? Well, things have been kind of rough for me the past few months. Yeah, church not going well, huh? No, no, attendance is flat, tithing's low. I'm not really connecting with my congregation. Well, Doug, boot cut khakis, that's not helping anything. Did you guys do a mannequin challenge at your church? Running man challenge. Pokemon Go series. Crying Jordan jokes. Also, we knew you were coming in. We took a look at some of your sermon series. You had one recently called uh, The Parables of Jesus. Oh, I'm bored. <laughs> Already, we just optioned a sermon series called Screenshotted If Jesus Had a Snapchat. We did. It helped literally no one, but he got so many followers from it. You ever heard of Netflix and Chill? Netflix and God's Will. What about Walking Dead? The Walking Bread. <laughs> Boom. Uh, I don't know, Finding Dory. Finding Glory? You got Doug. it, Doug, you're on it. So you just take mainstream titles and you make them Christian. Is that even legal? Hey, little phrase we like to say around here, trust the process. You know what's back now these days? A uh, little series, you might have heard of it, Gilmore Girls. Yeah, we already wrote a book called Fulfillmore, Fulfillmore Girls. Girls. Yeah, what do you think about that? I, I don't understand why you would imitate a culture that we're supposed to be against. Let's hop on your social media. Let's, Let's take a look at that. There's a lot of things we can improve there. Doug, look, you posted an Instagram at a Kroger, okay? Oh, bad news, Doug. You don't shop at Kroger anymore, okay? Whole Foods and Trader Joe's is where you're gonna live. Outdoor farmer's markets photos do so well for your new brand. Doug, we gotta hook you up with a personal trainer. Are you a member of a gym? It's real simple, okay? What we start with is the non-denominational multivitamin. That's just gonna give you a little bit more pep in your step, a little bit more energy on Sunday mornings. If you wanna go a step up from there, we have the Gros Shell Gummy. What that's going to do for you is give a little more tone in the shoulders, make those sweaters fit a little tighter. Now, if you want to go all the way, Furtick food. I don't know, guys. I just want to preach. And you will, but first, hair and makeup. Doug, you're wearing a polo shirt tucked into your khakis. Are you speaking at a golf pro shop? Tiger Woods, you not? I'm going to untuck it for you. We're going to start there. Okay. First of all, the length of the shirt is a problem, okay? Here's what we're going to do. You see this line right here? That's a swag pastor state. We call it the straight and narrow. We did it. I, I just rededicated my life. You look amazing. <gasps> Let's head over to your church. We got work to do. We'll swag out that sanctuary, add a wood pallet background. We'll have you plant satellite campuses in no time. Oh, and one wonders how Phil Johnson might respond. An itch for something new. An itch for something new. This is a malignant tendency that afflicted, has afflicted the American evangelical movement for at least 250 years. It is the reason today's evangelicals move from one fad to another with such breath, breathtaking speed and ease. I, in fact, I know some of you have heard this from me before because I think I've made this same point in every Shepherds Conference for the past 15 years. But you need to hear it again. The people we minister to, and even some of us pastors, are far too easily corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. Because there's such an incredible amount of pressure coming from within the church today, coming from people who insist that we cannot effectively reach our generation unless we follow the styles of popular culture. It's why so many pastors are exegeting movies rather than preaching the Word. Ah, yes, the latest fad from pulpits, 
movie sermon series. The pastor spends a fair amount of time at the Cineplex looking for the latest blockbuster, goes online to take some clips, potentially illegally, to use them as his text for his sermon. This is merely the latest fad. But whatever is currently in fashion will soon go out of fashion. Not only has it become virtually impossible to stay up to speed with all the changing styles, we also know, don't we, from past experience that today's fads will be the brunt of tomorrow's jokes. For decades, American evangelicals have blindly run after a seemingly endless parade of shallow fads. At, at one point, you know, everybody was reading fictional stories about territorial warfare with demons, this present darkness, and, and all its sequels. And then you had the left-behind craze, and that started to die as soon as everybody started praying the prayer of Jabez. And that gave way to, that gave way to 40 Days of Purpose, followed by Mel Gibson's movie, followed by the emerging church movement, followed by hipster religion, and who knows what, what else. I stopped following them after that. <clears throat> because the hipsters irritated me. Oh, slam, bang, from the one, the only, Phil Johnson, who can be heard by you if you are a Wretched Club member every week on Two Wretched for Radio. That's right, Phil Johnson, as only Phil Johnson can, spends time with us over there in Wretched Radio Land, which you can hear every single day when he takes subjects like trends, fads in the church, and speaks about them with some ding. And today, we actually look back with contempt on almost everything that was once wildly popular and then fell, fell out of fashion. No one who has any kind of influence is excited about the prayer of Jabez anymore. We make jokes about wild at heart. At least I hope you do. <laughs> Running after every new evangelical craze will not make you more relevant. It guarantees that eventually you're going to be totally irrelevant. Push, push, push. J.C. Ryle was mocked 100 years ago for being so traditional, for only preaching and writing books that exegeted scripture. His critics said, you got to get with the times, man. Have you read any of their books? Nope, you haven't. Why? Because they're not on anybody's shelves, but J.C. Ryle's works continue to flourish and be used by preachers today who know that the Word of God is always interesting and it is always unchanging. Why would we abandon it for a fad? Thank you very much for watching Something Wretched. If you would like to continue watching Wretched videos, would you be kind enough to become a Wretched Club member? Your monthly support keeps us on the air and you get lots of tchotchkes and benefits. Learn more at wretched.tv slash club.